Hello and welcome to this morning's Facebook LinkedIn Live. I'm delighted because today I'm chatting with Rebecca Newnham, who is the founder of Get Ahead, um, which is a franchise that supports small businesses in accessing the talent that they need when they need it. So today we're going to be chatting about owning a franchise and um, about the get ahead franchise how if you wanted to be a franchise owner the support um would be available to you and how being a franchise owner and a business owner can transform your work-life balance and give you a brilliant career um you know someone that also it's myself i am um, i'm a huge advocate of self-employment but obviously with support which is what rebecca is going to be chatting with us um, about today so thank you so much Rebecca for joining us it's such a pleasure to chat with you oh lovely to be here as always I know I love chatting with you I love get ahead I think it's such a good business and I you know I can see the benefits to so many people not just obviously mm. franchisee but to also to small businesses as well that, that need to access your services so do you want to give us someone's watching this and they've not heard about get ahead before um can you give people a bit of an overview as to who get ahead? Yeah, no, absolutely. So we are entering our teenage years. We're 13. <laughs> this yeah. It's quite scary. So I set get ahead up when my youngest daughter, I've got three girls, the youngest one started school. So that to me is a milestone in itself. She's just entered her final year of school doing A-levels and we've just come back from Leeds looking at universities. So I'm feeling my age today. Um, yeah. But no, so we set it up 13 years ago and, and I was, like I would imagine a number of you listening are, at that crossroads of thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do it all? How am I going to be the best mummy I can be and yeah. be available? But also, not selfishly, but how can I be running something for myself where I'm getting that, that classic work-life balance? So Get Ahead was born as a result of me thinking I can't go back. I worked for Sainsbury's in a pre-mummy life. I had a career break and although I loved it, I've always been very much of the belief that jobs come and go and your career changes and life happens. And the last thing I wanted was to do anything to um, sacrifice my girls and the lovely balance I'd created by being at home with them. But I was also bored. I mean, I wanted something more and I never felt felt bad about saying that. And I remember right. my mum, who'd run her own um, tutorial agency when I was growing up, she always said to me, you'll find your thing. And you know, when your parents say that, go, yeah, right but actually it so was what I was craving so I spent a long time looking at what I wanted to create and Get Ahead was born as I said in 2010 and it's now morphed into an opportunity to provide flexible work for our amazing clients delivered by a huge community of over 80 currently 80 freelancers that work for us and run by my franchisees who we call regional directors who have come to me through all sorts of directions, but ultimately with that underlying belief and desire for work-life balance. And they run a territory, and we can go into more detail on that in a minute, but they are getting and living the, their best life because they're getting that flexible working, but they're not having to, and I'm not being rude here, they're not having to be a TA at school or work at the local shop because yeah. that's the only option they've got available to them. Yeah. Have you noticed a difference between, I mean, because obviously we're talking about work-life balance and I wonder if you've noticed a difference because it is bloody hard setting up a business from scratch and I don't know if you you know you I tell my business that I wanted a better work-life balance but actually looking back I'm like it, it's been a really oh, like, wild two years yeah. I've not stopped yeah. I'm not even gonna like sugarcoat this it's not easy founding a business from scratch yeah. so have you notice a difference between how much you had to work getting get ahead off the ground yeah to what actually the support is available oh, to you yeah, franchisees. Yeah, totally. And I, in many ways, I'm quite jealous of the franchisees that join me because someone else has done all that hard work. Yeah. And often chatting to you, Liz, reminds me of how much was involved at the beginning because I forget. It's exhausting. Much. Just like getting the domains, getting your company registered. I mean, it's not you have to be a contract. You have to be an expert in tech and an excellent I remember sitting there going well I need to write a blog what what do I write about well you know all those things that are taken away and it's stripped right back to you having autonomy to run something for yourself but with that comfort blanket of amazing people around you that have either done it already or are doing it in a non-competitive environment yeah that's the ultimate bit isn't it because it's very easy to get imposter syndrome look around at everyone else when actually if you're part of a franchise where you've got other people doing exactly what you're doing but in another part of the country it's that lovely feeling of you know having a, like a big sister that's sort of there to 
to look after you and, and has your best interests at heart. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's sort of a recruitment business, isn't it? Because you support businesses. Yes, and you've been really helpful is at, at picking that out because I've, and I've had chats with a number of people over the last couple of weeks around it being like a, a not necessarily a resourcing franchise, but an outsourcing supportive. Yeah. And it's not a, a recruitment in the sense you're having to go out and find people that will do the delivery. It's more helping and identifying clients and what they need support with and then finding them from within our internal resourcing pool. Yeah. So someone's watching this, do they need to have had a recruitment background? No, I, I need, so the, the sort of the core um, values and sort of personality traits is someone that's curious and I often laugh and say, you know, I'm nosy slash curious. So someone that's naturally interested in people, but has an element of sort of commercial backbone. So is c clearly happy to, to look at a spreadsheet and work out margins. We obviously teach the system as well, but I need, I don't want someone that possibly wouldn't feel comfortable discussing a business development opportunity, for example. So it's someone that will go to a network and we do a lot of support about how to network, but I, I don't want somebody that's not very happy about having their voice heard. You see what I mean? So having a confidence, a curiosity to unpick what someone else is struggling with, and then a confidence to think, well, actually, I'm going to match those to a member of the team. And we have wonderful, sophisticated tools to help you do that, but you need to, to, to want to help. And not in a sort of girl guided bit, but in a sort of just in a, a natural, it'd be a natural instinct. I imagine you're somebody probably with you know, a lovely pool of friends and you're poss possibly the one that people will go to ask for opinions and ask for connections. And it's that sort of natural ability to be interested. What about sales then? Do you need to be a good, you might not. Need and to I, I used to hate that. So, you know, when I was a retail buyer, I, I was on the receiving end of the selling bit. So, yes, you need to be able to confidently talk about the opportunities and, and solutions for helping but we're never in that cringy sales pattern and that's not where business gets made we're all around nurturing and connecting and building connections that then lead on to the sales bit so it's not a cringy cold pick up the phone and ring 50 businesses and ask if they need help that's not how we operate yeah, yeah. you've Which got your pool you've got the candidates that yes. side sounds like it's been taken care of. So the clients, so then if you're not cold calling, then who's finding the clients and how do you find so, them? Yeah. So we have a beautiful new website, which launched a couple of months ago, and I'm currently starting a really aggressive SEO um, investment in that because there's nothing worse than having a beautiful website and the SEO not delivering. So that's a real focus for us for the next quarter. But the website delivers um, inquiries and obviously go and have a look at the website. You can see it's broken down by location, but we get a lot of central inquiries that come in. And because we're relatively small and growing, there's not a huge number of franchisees. We've got just under 10 at the moment. So if opportunities come in, I will then hand those out to the franchisees. So they won't just come to you because you're in that territory. They may come because there's no one next to you in the if you were to look at the map. So yeah. inquiries come in that way. Um, networking is a wonderful source of um, work for us because our ideal clients are generally the busy business owner who will go networking, but they'll also be connected to other people that you're meeting in networking environments. So, for example, on Friday, I went to Leeds. I had a great catch up with Fiona, who runs our team up there. And then she took me to one of her networking meetings. And it was a really large one in Leeds. Lots of interesting people there those are the types of businesses that you will find in a networking environment and you'll just chat and connect on linkedin linkedin is a huge social media platform for us and as part of our induction for any new franchisee we offer bespoke linkedin training and i know you love a bit of linkedin as well Liz. you know that's where what training what say so someone you know buys into the franchise talk us through the first couple of weeks and what, what that was so we will have like connected we will have met already and that's really important for me to have that face-to-face -face connection because we all know how important it is to feel that energy and feel part of something i'll also always encourage um, any prospects to chat to other existing franchisees because it's all very well me selling the dream but you want to be able to talk to people that are living and breathing it so once everything's signed the legal agreements and um, the franchisees being, fees being paid, then we meet up and we have a two day induction. And I always make them bespoke depending on what our new franchisee needs. So, for example, one franchisee had some public speaking training because they just wanted to sort of get a little bit more of a confidence. They hadn't networked in that kind of environment before. But the core things we do 
our LinkedIn training because that's what I need the team to feel comfortable on. We do a little bit of um, sort of public speaking. I talk about what a, a classic networking meeting's like. We give scripts on things that are working well for the team. Um, we will meet a new or an existing virtual expert so they can actually hear live what our virtual experts are actually doing for clients. And that was really, really helpful. And that brings it alive. I'll often take a, a new franchisee to a networking meeting with me. Uh, or if I can't do it here, then I'll go with them and sort of look after them that way. We encourage our franchisees to do at least one business expo in their first year. I provide all the kit. I've got my own singing or dancing sort of branded up table and things. So I'm hugely supportive at any event like that. And it's lovely for me then because when we're launching in a new area, I get to know other people and I can sign post client types. And maybe I might even know people in that area. So that's really helpful. And yeah, yeah we meet up. And I think a big thing for me, Liz, as well as, a new franchisee doesn't just launch with me and then it's like, well, off you go, you know, very much handheld. And one of my franchisees is a mentor for new franchisees starting. And that's lovely as well, because it removes me a little bit from that relationship and they can have, you know, confidential chats about what they want to do. But we also have a monthly franchisee meeting that all the franchisees attend. It's in the diary. It's hosted and run by my marketing consultant, Brooke. We have a tight agenda we have a hot topic we talk about and I love those meetings because it's a real opportunity to sort of for me just to watch everyone in action together and as I've already said in that non-competitive environment we're all about wanting get ahead to succeed and grow in the right way so well, it's true isn't it I mean if get ahead I mean I used to be um, a fan franchise because um, through Colour Me Beautiful <laughs> oh I remember yes. yeah and obviously it benefits you doesn't it if other people are successful and then the Colour Me Beautiful brand mm -hmm becomes more well known and then people like go then because it's kind of beautiful and they'd be like oh my friend had her colors done by somebody you know no you know 200 miles away but you know and it gives that sense of camaraderie it's color me beautiful and you know it had that name so yeah and, that, and so you're all rubber stamping the same thing and i think i wanted to sort of touch on the process so a franchisee will go networking will find a potential client will have a one-to-one -one, really get to understand what they want and then once they've cherry picked and got a sort of hit list of things that the client needs support with, we have a skills database, which is ginormous. And in it, it houses all our virtual experts. They are ranked by their um, skill set. So then a franchisee would pop in the details they're looking for and then out comes the sort of the top 10 lists of potential people. Because as you can appreciate this, when I first started franchising five or six years ago, I generally knew all the virtual experts in the team but now as we're growing we're getting new people joining weekly which is amazing but I'm my resourcing team are very hot on we don't accept everybody so the franchisees are reassured to know that we've only got the experts yes, they've been vetted yeah but then that system comes in and they can just sort of get a sense of the different types of people and when we're selling our services to clients we're selling on not only skill set but on personality as well, because I think we all recognise yeah, someone might have the right skills that if, you're, if there's a slight personality clash, you know, you're handing over precious parts of your business to somebody, you need to feel really comfortable that you've got the right person and you're spending time with them remotely. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. But I'm really proud of that system. That's come in in the last 18 months. And Suzanne and Lucy within my team have worked really super hard to make sure that the, because we're only ever good as the systems we've got, aren't we, and the information we've got. So that's something we spend a lot of time and energy making sure it's up to date. Absolutely. So remind people, how much how much is the investment? We've talked a little bit about what you, what you include as well. So it's £8,000 plus VAT. Um, all our franchisees become VAT registered because it's just easier to have that as a uniform thing. So the VAT gets claimed back. But it, we, and we often will say, you know, if you were to divide that up in over five years, it's the cost of a, a cheap takeaway coffee these days. It's about. Do they pay it up front or is the payment? Yeah, I, yes. So it's paid up, up, up front. There are payment options. A number of my franchisees have got a startup loan for theirs. So that's something that's definitely mm -hmm. available. And I can link people with that. I, I need my new franchisees to feel comfortable that, you know, eight grand is not a huge stretch because obviously you'll start earning, but you're only earning as soon as clients come on board. And it is a wonderful scalable opportunity, but I would hate and I will turn people down if it's got to be your main income in the household, for example, because this is about creating a lifestyle for you. It's not something that happens overnight, but with the time and energy and systems, it's a guaranteed, you know, good source of income. But it's but I just need to feel comfortable that someone's 
ready. And often people will have kids that are just starting school and suddenly they've got that window of opportunity and their hours, we, we, our financial model is based on a part-time hours as well, because personally, I never wanted to work nine to six every day. I, I, I work better in the daytime. You know, all of those things make a difference, Liz, don't they, I think, in terms of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So so it's £8,000. They come in, they get the website. They get a page on your website. Yeah, page on the website, all the training, all our support. The me got, I suppose they've got staff themselves that they can lean on if they need some. Yeah, oh, no, absolutely. And as uh, I mentioned, we have our monthly marketing meeting where we all come together. Brooke provides a bespoke plan every month that's got a different theme. So we have two new blogs that are written every month that support that theme, along with an infographic, all things that you can easily pop out on social media to sort of promote what you do and, the, and the opportunities then to have ideas on what to put out on other, on other social media platforms, along with what to say at networking. And we write case studies as well. So that's a lovely opportunity for a brand new franchisee to have a pool of case studies that really bring alive the business so they can talk with authority then when yeah. they're networking about what the business does. Because obviously if you're launching a business on your own and you're completely brand new, you won't have that understanding of exactly what kind of work has been done in the past because you're brand new. So that's a huge yeah. benefit. And you've got the contracts as well, the client contracts. All the contracts. Yes. Well, info, who, who invoices clients? Yes, yeah, so you as a franchisee own your clients. So okay, you make a margin on the difference between what you charge your virtual expert services yeah. out to versus what you pay them. And that's all available on a, on a financial model that I can show people. But yeah, you are, you're responsible for your clients. So it's great. So you are that project manager. You're the one person that the client will come to. And a huge benefit for a client is they know they can come just to one person. Yeah, they've they, got that account management. Manage that. And that's another sort of big part of this role. It's if you're in, you need to be naturally interested in that business development role in the sense of growing that relationship and nurturing it and being interested, but also being able to let the virtual expert and the client crack on and do things without you interfering. And yeah, I think yeah. that, that's an important part as well. But the beauty of it is it's totally scalable. You can always support a client and that's how we have the growth. Because imagine if you were doing the client delivery as well as the, the marketing and the business development, there would only be a limit to how many hours you had available. So this is why I set this up was to give that breadth of scale which is what we've achieved. So when so you I, first started it, were you delivering or have you never delivered? I delivered for about 18 months. But then I was like, oh, I'm, no, I'm not an expert in Excel. And I suddenly started identifying all these different areas that potential clients needed help with. And that's when I went out to market to look for other people. And having friends in the playground, I suddenly looked around and thought, hold on a minute, this is, this is where I need to be. You know, there is that pool of people available. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's interesting. But and also on the flip side, if you want, if you're a marketeer, for example, and I've got a couple of our franchisees like this, you may well say, actually, I'm really interested in this piece of strategy that a client wants. I'm as a franchisee, I'm going to take, deliver that piece yeah, for margin, and then I'm going to perhaps outsource some of the um, deliverables to other members of the team. So, you know, total free will for you to do some direct clients, especially at the beginning, which is quite nice because then you get a flavour for what it's like to work with a client. That is good. Yeah. So if you could, yeah yourself in the pool for something yeah, absolutely i've got no problem with that at all yeah yeah nice um and then i think also what's the beauty of a franchise is speaking to sam i think it's one of your friends is the fact that you can sell a franchise you know absolutely. if yes you know yeah. whatever reason you know down the line you maybe your kids maybe you want to go back to corporate life yeah, or absolutely and i've had that a couple of times and i'm hugely aware as well you know personality you know, per personal reasons happen things change and I I'm totally and I would say I I feel that my franchisees know that, you know I'm not daft you know things happen and the last thing I would ever want is for someone to feel they've got to keep it going because they've made a commitment to me but equally I, everyone has to take it take it seriously but there are opportunities absolutely of selling and that's yeah. it very easy and we are part of the British Franchise Association so we're accredited in every aspect of the way we work both with our franchisees and with our clients so that's a big rubber stamp and I'm also a franchise consultant which I'm loving because I'm helping other brands scale so it's just an interesting sort of concept but it's very, very ethical and that's what it's all about rather than yeah. some, um, anything so, else. So you mentioned this part time what sort of hours do your franchisees typically work so they will generally work from sort of 9 30 till 3 those are sort of core hours and not all of them work every day and actually some of the team some of the franchisees use some of our team to do some sort of virtual 
admin support or run their social media channels as well. And that's a lovely thing to think about. So you don't feel like you have to do absolutely everything yourself. Um, one of my team operators of partnerships, so Christian Suzanne in Berkshire and Surrey. Berkshire. Yeah, so they run it together. And they are finalists in the British Franchise Awards in the autumn, which is really exciting. And they, they were friends. They met when they had kids. They always thought they would work well together. And they've done that and they've launched with me three years ago and they are storming. They're doing so well. And it's wonderful to, for them to be recognised by the British Franchise Association as well. So that's a big thing we do. When we launch a franchise, we do a huge PR piece. So Caroline, our marketing and PR manager, will then send out a load of um, press and updates that way. But then also we will identify awards and things like that that are important. And also journal requests about people wanting the examples of work-life balance and things we're forever pumping out information that way. So, I mean, that uh, is like amazing because I know how much PR is. Because I can't, I can't afford PR. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, extortionate, can't it? I know. And I, yeah. I'm really thrilled. I've been working with Caroline since she launched her business. So, yeah, we we both support each other, but we get some really good traction. And Caroline is on writes the awards as well, and that's a big thing. Because often I think it's very hard sometimes for you to publicly promote yourself, isn't it? Sometimes oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm of eyes on that and Caroline does a number of our clients award entries as well which is a, a skill in itself absolutely I don't know I mean what you offer I think is such good value so we talked about you sort of mentioned that you you know if someone's starting out it's obviously not a get rich quick um yeah. or whatever I mean no, none of them are so if anyone be a millionaire next week don't believe them um, but you know after a year or so how much can people typically expect to be earning you can, oh and i hate this question is and it's Sorry. always one I, and i and i will share the financial model with anyone who well, once i've had a conversation with an nda but you can be you could be earning you know in the thousands assuming you've got some decent clients coming in and actually we work very closely to identify the type of clients where you're going to get the hours so we you want those slightly larger clients that have a larger number of hours that therefore deliver a higher margin over time. But I can absolutely share that model with you. And it's, you know, it, it's a wonderful addition to household income. It can absolutely. replace your current one if you put if you put the time and effort in. And if yeah, you're finding the right clients. And a number of our clients will want more than one service. And some clients may be getting up to 60 hours a month. So you're talking 30, 35 pounds an hour they have transitioned sometimes and said, actually, I want to work direct with the virtual expert, which you could say is a negative, but actually I see that as a huge positive because the skill set that we're bringing in means that the client then has managed to achieve way beyond what they thought they could. And we then have a resourcing fee in place as you would do. I was going to say, do you have like a temp to fair pay fee? Which is great as well. So it's huge yeah, variety. But yeah, so. Quite good, aren't they? Those? I've always been a perm recruiter, but I remember, you know, the temp recruiters as they'd get like a temp fee it would be yeah no it's nice you see yeah, 1500 two grand and yeah for, for and that's a lovely feeling as well so yeah. i think one thing i want to say is it's a lovely opportunity because you're supporting and meeting all sorts of people and it's a privilege for a business owner to confide in you and to be saying what kind of help they need because you're helping them on that on that entrepreneurial journey and it's a lovely relationship to have absolutely Oh, well, where can people find out more about Get Ahead, connect with you? I, I love a bit of LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn. Our website's getaheadva.com. And within that, we've got a join us section. So a join us for more information about the franchise and a join us section if you're interested in joining up as a virtual expert. So to offer admin, marketing, PR, web development and all of that stuff. So the website's a really good point. And I've got a quiz, lovely quiz that just goes through what it's like to um run a franchise and whether you would be a good fit for that and then there's a calendly link as well to book some time in the diary with me but i can send the prospectus and case studies and things as well so um, yeah. all available and obviously i've got a lovely page on your site Liz, haven't yeah. I, with previous um interviews and things on loads yeah. loads of interviews if you want to know anything about get ahead but also more generally about franchising so if you've you know it's yeah, I've seen a franchise that you think, oh, I like the look of that or whatever. And yeah. then also got my book. And also loads about businesses as well, isn't there? You've done a lot about just how to run a business. Oh yeah, how to run a business as a parent and how to do that. And I've also self I'm confident in the camera. I self-published a book and I'm more than happy to send those out to anyone that's interested. It talks about 
the stage you're probably at wanting that flexibility, some exercises in there, but also brings the um, franchise opportunity alive a little bit more as well. So um, we've got no problem sending those out. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us today. Thank you to everyone that's watching the live and on the replay. And um, and yeah, if you've got any questions, do get in touch with Rebecca or me because I know I know a lot about Get Ahead now. Because we do. You do. Yes. <laughs> so oh, I can just... it. Yeah. Thank you.